Hey everybody, it's Mike from Orderflows, and I hope everyone's doing well. And welcome to today's video. You know, today is uh, January fifth. It is Thursday. Tomorrow we got the non-farm payroll number coming out. Um, you know, we'll see what uh, fireworks that brings. Now, um, before I begin, you know, be sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you get something out of it. What I'm going to be talking about today is using a delta footprint to spot absorption and the reason why i want to bring this up is because you know i've gotten a few emails uh over the last week or you know over you know basically over the christmas break um asking you know how can you see absorption because you know absorption is something that you know it's a term that gets thrown around a lot and when you're using a footprint chart in my opinion the easiest way to see it is by using a delta footprint now what I have up here on my screen is your normal uh, bid ask footprint, right? You're seeing the volume traded on the bid, the volume traded on the offer. Now, at a price level, right, there's generally going to be something traded on the bid, something traded on the offer. And when we're looking at a normal volume footprint, we're generally looking at how it's transacting in the two way auction. Now, with a delta footprint, there's two types there's a diagonal delta and there's a horizontal delta. Horizontal delta is at the price, right? 38, 49, 75, 165 traded on the bid, 169 traded on the offer. When I use a normal delta footprint, I am taking the difference between 165 and 169, and it'll show up as a reading of four positive delta. Now, for example, the next uh, price level, 38, 49 and three quarters, it's 240 traded on the bid, 108 traded on the offer. So in this case, the delta would be uh, minus 132, and it would show up on the bid side. Now, the diagonal delta will show it to you in the two-way auction, right, when the market is the difference between the bid and the offer. And when I'm looking for absorption on a footprint chart, I'm looking at the price. Where was the volume traded? at that price was it traded on the bid was it traded on the offer then the next thing i'm looking for is the magnitude you know was it um, strong volume or, or was it just normal volume or, or even small volume and really what i'm looking for when i'm looking at the delta footprint is i'm looking for those pockets of big volume because that often represents strong resting liquidity at the market right you hear the terms uh taking liquidity, providing liquidity, right? When someone buys at the market, they are removing liquidity from the market. If there's, if you're going in and you are working a limit order, you know, whether for one contract or 100 contracts, you are providing liquidity into the market. So let's uh, go switch this to a Delta footprint chart. Right now, this is your normal uh, bid ask footprint. And, you know, most order flow software will allow you to have different types of footprints and again if if your footprint doesn't have it you should probably get a footprint that has some flexibility to add to to change it you know my order flows trader uh we got bid ask we've got delta we've got volume we've got diagonal delta type of footprint so i'll change this to a delta footprint now again uh for this video today i'm using an e-mini one minute chart you know most people like to look at e-minis most people use a time-based chart now i know a lot of people also use range-based charts but you know sort of keep it uh simple we'll just use a simple time-based chart and let's take a look at what i'm looking at so when you're looking at the delta footprint again remember it's the horizontal um bid and offer so you look, you're seeing what traded on the bid at a price 38.50 and the volume traded on the offer at 38.50 Right, I'm not using the diagonal delta. Okay, so just give it a second to come up here. You know, today we had actually a quite a bit of movement. The day started out really, I don't say slow, but you know, we, we opened up and we were at our lows of the day when cash opened. Then, you know, once cash opened, we pushed down and started making new lows. And then we just sort of went, I, I hate to say sideways because our range, you know, we're looking at around 38.23 right here up to around 38.50 for most of the morning okay so what i'm looking at right if i'm looking at a delta footprint for absorption is now i'm not saying you know during the course of the trading day you're, you're always flipping your charts back and forth no keep it at you know screens are inexpensive now and if you're looking at a footprint you're a day trader and it's in your best interest to add another screen and just keep a delta footprint up there for finding something that 
can give you an insight into the market that you probably wouldn't have noticed if you're just looking at a normal bid ask footprint. You know, I, I see people always say, well, you know, screens are, you know, you got a lot of screens because you're, you're compensating for something. No, you know, you're just trying to find an edge, right? I've got multiple screens. I got big monitors. I, and I break up my screens in my monitor. I've got, you know, four charts on one monitor because I got a 43 inch, couple of 43 inch monitors. So I'm looking at a lot of things, right? Because, you know, who knows? You might find that one little thing that's going to give you an insight into the market you might have overlooked. So what I'm really looking for right now, this is a horizontal delta, just a normal delta footprint, okay? And as we're going into the lows, right, as this is um, what you're sort of expecting to see, right, you're seeing the volume being transacted on the bid side, right? Because there's we're coming into liquidity, right? Everyone's got orders that are resting in there. I'm sort of looking for these areas where there's big liquidity, okay? You know, here's 363. So as we're coming down, I'm not surprised to see um, you know, the volume at the bottom of the bars here, you know, all on the bid side, all on the bid side, all on the bid side. That's what you expect to see. It's when I start seeing the market, you know, move away from lows, and then start coming back down and testing areas is really what I'm looking for. So for example, this bar right here at 907, this is the type of bar that I like to um, see where, you know, we rallied up from the low of 23 and what was it 23 and a half got all the way up to 40 we're coming up in here sort of a swing high we're running into you know a couple of bars with resting liquidity we come back you know earlier we came up here you know 111 121 come off a little bit work our way back up 143 166 189 104 107 come off come back up i still see some liquidity there and then we come back down it then this little tiny bar here that looks so inconsequential this is the type of bar that I like where basically from the midpoint below, you have the volume on the bid side, the midpoint above all the volume on the offer side. So what's, what's it telling me? Well, it's telling me this market is coming down and it's coming down into liquidity, all right? It's coming down. It's aggressive sellers are selling it, but it's being met with some nice passive buyers in the market. Um, and then once the market, once, you know, I'll say once traders realize there's liquidity there, but it's absorbing whatever selling is taking place. Then what you see on the way back up is just all the offers getting lifted. Okay. Now people often will say to me, Mike, well, yeah, you know, shouldn't you just look for those bars where it's just all the offers are being lifted like this? Yeah. I mean, that's what you expect to see, right? When a market is trading up, right? You know, I mean, obviously the offers are being lifted. The market is going up. That's nice to see bars with, you know, majority of the offers, but that's what a green bar is going to look like. What I want to see is where the market came into an area of liquidity and that liquidity just soaked up and it absorbed all that selling that was taking place, you know, and not just like here where it's just three price levels at the bottom, because at the bottom of green bars, you're looking for that liquidity. But when it's about half of the bar and it's a green candle, it's coming down into that liquidity. That's telling me something just as, you know, later, um, what was it? When we got up to, where was that price area? I mean, these are nice, but these are still green candles. I'm still a little wary of it. But I'll talk about that in a second. But let's get to that point. Um, I think it was around 12 something. We started to see a little bit of movement here. Okay, so now it's we're sort of coming up into this area up in here, right? We got all the way up to 38.50 even. So we rallied up, right? We had, we had this nice little movement, you know, this nice big bar up. Um, we're coming up. We ran into some liquidity up here, came off a little bit. Um, next bar sort of comes up towards it you know, not necessarily strong volumes then it starts coming off um, and then we make another run we finally get right up to 3850 but on this move here right that to me this was very telling you got some strong volumes in here right you got the 121 the 138 186 193 75 now again remember this is delta this is the difference between the volume that traded on the bid the volume that traded on the offer and I just I know just by looking at the bars when I'm seeing this type of volume sort of at at the tops of red candles that's telling me that you know there's strong liquidity up there as opposed to just you know 2 1 40 50 you know here was some strong liquidity as well you know the 105 130 134 um 
market didn't really come off of that here. It sort of came off a little bit better. Um, you know, I'd still be looking to sell this if this next bar were starting to break and head a bit lower. Now, what I liked about this bar as well was, again, once you ran into that liquidity, what you had is everyone turned sellers here, right? You can see just it's all on the bid side. The aggressive selling took over. In this case, you know, the market just went inside, inside for a little bit. Um, one bar, two bars, and then the third bar, finally, it started to break down. And then it was just slowly, you know, grinding down lower um, from, you know, this is that, what, 45 in level, 45 and a quarter, um, you know, where you get down into the 30s. It was a little bit more of a slower grind. You know, a bit later, it, it did break down, you know, again here and then here. Um, we did run up into this, you know, bar at about 150, but we came up here, tested it, and again, you could sort of see that liquidity taking place there, right? The 205, the 177. Now, people will ask, you know, well, what about the volume on the bid side, right, as the market is going up? Well, yeah, normally this would be a, a nice bullish bar, right? If this bar was positioned lower in the move, right, and I'm seeing this big negative delta the minus 432 the minus 249 at much lower prices to me that would be very bullish right but again it's coming up after you move from 38 you know 38 all the way up to 3850 um so I'm, I'm getting that it, it's just it just sort of gives that impression of you know it's coming in after a move people are sort of fomoing into the market oh we're breaking out because we broke out above you know the 50 area we're going higher you know people are tripping over themselves trying to get long but they're running into resting liquidity here market comes off and then again it just struggles to come back up every time it sort of starts poking back up around the 50 51 area it runs into some liquidity here here and then the market sells off so you know that's the way that i use delta footprints now you know there's certain setups that i like to look for in um the delta and there was one uh, where was it here i, I just glossed over it really quick um, okay, I was going back a little bit further, but things that I like to see in the deltas is something like this. Now, again, I, I don't really like to get short off of green candles, right? Because oftentimes there's a reason why it's green. Now, when you're obviously trading on a minute based chart, you know, the chart just closes after 60 seconds if you're on a one minute chart. So sometimes, you know, you get these green candles, even though they're small. I do know the market did run up into some liquidity up in here, here as well in the next minute. But this is where it got interesting because this bar, this is a red candle. It's what we call a delta tail where it has this one positive delta on top. And then it's just all the bids getting hit here, right? You can see the minus 18, minus 24, minus 144, minus 34, minus 93, 63, minus 14, all on the bid side. So I ran, the market ran up into liquidity right up in here, right? You can just see it's a, just a wall of liquidity here. It comes off, runs back up, more liquidity here. Bar opens up, trades a little bit here, and then it's just all getting hit right in this bar. Then this bar, majority of the volume that's taking place, or I'll say the majority of the volume, but majority of the aggressive trading, right? Because this is a delta footprint, it's not a regular footprint, is taking place on the bid side. So all here, majority here, what are you expecting, right? Before you had very strong aggressive buying, strong aggressive buying, now you're starting to see strong aggressive selling. Obviously the deltas are negative. And again, you know, looking at this move up, if you were to take into account the deltas, um, you know, here's positive 272, here's 667, 351, one, uh, 340, 112. Okay, so the market is going up, Deltas are getting weaker, right? 600, 350, 340, 112, obviously negative, more negative. That's your sign to get short, right? You're not looking for this. You shouldn't be looking for this market to um, all of a sudden turn around and start rallying because now you're seeing all that aggressive selling coming in and the market drops about uh, a quick 10 points over the next five, six minutes, right? So, you know, that's how a delta footprint can help you spot signs of absorption but more importantly it's not just spotting the signs of absorption as you, you see here but it's also picking up what you want to see after the absorption is 
the bids or the offer, you know, if it's absorption at a high after a move up, once you see that absorption, you want to see the market turn sellers. You want to see the aggressive sellers coming in, hitting those bids and the market to drop. Just as if you're at the low or a low of the day, you're looking for that sign of absorption. But not only that, you want to see that aggressive buying come in. You want to see all the offers getting lifted, right? You don't want to be seeing, um, you know, the two-way trade going back and forth because for the move to be a quick, clean move, swift one, you want to see that aggressive trading coming in and just whack all as many bids as possible, giving you that sign that, you know what, this market's about to move in, you know, in this case, down. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I sort of took a, a long way to get to the point, but, um, you know, sometimes I, I find myself tripping over my words. So anyway, I hope you guys appreciate this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.